Okay, so here we have our Shannon problem. We begin with the formula in this case. Uh, we know that the probability of receiving 77 is 7 times higher than that of any other number. So the probability of receiving 77 is 7 over 8 and the, and the probability of receiving any other number is 1 over 8. Using this formula, which is the Shannon formula, we calculate the entropy for this case. In this case we only have two possible values and those are 7 over 8 and 1 over 8. And with this we calculate our entropy. which is approximately 0 0.5 to say okay so next we begin our next channel problem which is about a crazy scientist to calculate the entropy you would need to know the total number of possible recipes since you have four elements and each element has four different levels the total number of possibilities actually combinations would be their product so 4 times 16 times 4 again and times 2 which is 256 with 256 possible recipes, the probability of receiving each recipe is 1 over 256. The entropy is then calculated using, using the, Shannon pro the Shannon formula. And with the sum of all these values, will give you an average quantity of information contained in a single explosive recipe which is actually 8 for this set of problems we need to add n1 plus n2 in fixed point because n1 equals 69 is actually a positive number we don't need to change anything about it just transform it into binary but minus 93 is a negative number so because of that, we need to actually write it in complementary code, which is exactly 93 in binary, but with it bits flipped around. And of course, adding 1. Okay, to add these two numbers, we align them by adding leading zeros if necessary, so we have We add these two numbers bit by bit, just like, like regular binary addition, but taking into account the fact that the most significant bit represents the sign. Excuse me, just a mistake there. Okay. Okay, so the result is actually minus 24 in decimal, which is correct. And as the most significant bit, we have 1, that means it is a negative number. So that's it. So for the second fixed point problem, we just need to compute minus n1 minus n2. So we need to first calculate minus n1 separately and then add it to n2.
okay so for this we just used same as before complementary code which is actually just 19 with its bits flipped around plus one so because minus 27 is actually subtracted from minus n1 we just leave it like that we don't need to do anything with it now we align the two numbers just like before and add them together As we can see, the result is actually 8 in decimal, but we have the most significant bit, 1, and that means it's actually negative, but because we work with positive results, we just ignore it. Now we have some floating point problems. We need to represent minus 32.025 in floating point simple precision. To do this we just transform 32 from decimal to binary and its part that's below 0, which is 0 0.25. And we apply the classic method of dividing and multiplying by 2. Now we stop. Now we counted the twos, so we know that the exponent is actually 5. So to the exponent we add the number 127, so we get 132. which is the 8-bit representation for the binary number we have on screen. Now we do a small table to see the difference between these numbers and to show the mantissa. That is the sign bit. Which is 1. So this is the 8 bits, the exponent as I said before, and this is the mantissa. So the next problem is representing minus 
1 to 5 in floating point double precision. So this, became, so this can be represented as it follows. Now we apply the classic method of multiplying by 2. Now we add to the exponent, which is actually 2, we add the number 1023. So we get the result that is 1025, which is the 11 bit representation. So the sine bit, it indicates a negative number, just like we know. Here we have the exponent. Just like I said before. And now the mantissa. Now we have a simple problem which asks us how many Hamming bits are already inserted in a 300 bit message. So we know the rules. So which power of 2? Is actually higher than 300. So we have the Hamming bits which are represented at the powers of 2 in the code. So 1, 2, 4, 8 and so on. Until actually Hamming bit 256. From this we get that there are 9 Hamming bits in this message. Now from hem for Hamming problem 2, we need to calculate the Hamming distance between these two numbers, which are represented in hexadecimal. We just transform them in binary. So the Hamming distance between two numbers is the number of bits that differ between binary representations of the numbers. So C in hexadecimal is actually 11011. Actually, excuse me, 11001110 and 9A is this number. So which bits do differ? So it's actually this, this, and this. So the Hamming distance is actually 3. And the bits that differ are the second, four, fourth, and sixth. Now for the first BCD problem, we just have to represent the following number, which is 435 in multiple codes. 
first we want to represent this number in 8421 which is just called BCD to do this we just represent its figures separately into their binary form and by putting them together we get the representation of number 435 in the weighted code 8421 which just like I said is actually called BCD by many people now to represent this number in access tray which is an unweighted code we need to add 3 to each figure and then transform the result in binary as we can see 4 plus 3 equals 7 3 plus 3 is 6 and 5 plus 3 is 8 and we represent them separately in binary And now we put them together. And now to represent them in gray, we have to know that the gray code is actually an unweighted code, just like XS3, but it has his its own rules now for the second problem in this chapter we have to do the conversion in decimal, octal and hexadecimal for the binary number. Now to do this, we calculate the decimal value by summing up the, power, the powers of 2 for each bit that, that is equal to 1. So we have 5, 3, 2, 1 and minus 2 of course. So we get the value of 46.25. Now for the octal conversion you can group the binary digits into groups of 3 as you see here starting from the right but anyway and convert each group in its octal equivalent so the octal equivalent of this number is just 56.2 and for the hexadecimal we group them in 4 
and we convert each group into their hexadecimal equivalent. which is actually 2e4. So, to convert the code word to a hexadecimal representation, we would first have to generate the code using the generator and the initial message, of course. To do this, firstly, we convert the initial message in binary. Now we associate the corresponding polynomials polynomial to the message, which is now in binary, and also to the generator which is called G. We do this by checking which powers of 2 are used in their composition. So now that we have our polynomials, we need to multiply the grade of the polynomial M with the highest grade of the poly polynomial G. So we get a new polynomial which is much bigger now. And now we start with a lot of work to do the polynomial division. Now we check which of the numbers, actually x's, go away. Now, just like we know, this is actually polynomial division in base 2. That's why we don't write them with minus, actually their negative counterpart there. Now they go away.
now we get the final one So now we just see that the rest is zero, so the message is actually correct. It doesn't show any errors. And that's it. Now we just have a logical circuit problem. We have to simplify this logical circuit using a suitable method of our own choice. Now for an explanation that is a NOR gate, that is a NOT gate, and that an OR gate and the final one which sends us the result is the AND gate and because it's an AND gate we represent the result as a product of sums. Now for the second problem, we just have to draw a, cir a circuit ourselves. Now we are using an AND gate Now, that is a NAND gate. So now we draw our final gate, which is actually a simple OR gate.
Now for our final part we decided to do some key maps. We draw the key map to ease our work. And we put the min terms in the key map. After that. Now just like we did in class, we invert the last two columns and the last two rows, so the difference between them is just one bit. Just like in grey code. Now we put the min terms in the K map. Now we analyze the situation. We see that we can actually divide the min terms into groups. The first and the last column, which is actually the third, and the second row all together. Now we analyze the common elements from these min terms, min terms, pardon me, and so we get that the function is actually just not d or not a and b. And this is a sum of products. Now because I forgot to write the groups, I'll just write them down right now. For the first one, we have the elements 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Surprisingly, they're all even numbers. And for the second group, we just have the second row, which are the elements 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now we have the second problem. Again, we draw the K map to ease our work.
but this time it's actually max terms again we put the elements the columns are inverted there and the last two rows as well I forgot to put the truth functions at the beginning, so I put them now. And now we put the max terms in. Now we select the groups We chose to have three groups here So the K-map is divided into three groups of max terms That's the first and that's the second And the last one is the third I'll just write the elements down to ease my work. <coughs> and the last one has only two elements, four and twelve. And now because we have max terms we choose the elements that are not there so instead of choosing the common elements we just choose the other ones And again, because we have max terms, we actually have capital letters, but I forgot that. <laughs> 